nails that you want to use, a non-corrosive nail, even for the, for the trim, a box nail. A box nail has a thinner shank to it. And ever since stainless came out, I don't even use hot dip galvanized anymore. You, you can, but there's always that chance that, you know, striking it on the top of the, of the head with your hammer or with a gun that it, that it could wear. So ever since, I think 1992 or three, we've been using stainless steel nails. Um, it costs a little bit more, but it just goes without saying that it, it's a much better product. And I also try to use a deformed nail, either a ring shank nail or a twist nail, something that's deformed so it won't pull out as much. So just getting the right faster, and, and this is a gun nail. I broke this off the coil. So, you know, the, the trim guns, everybody uses trim guns now at this point. <laughs> We want to direct the knife to the outside, and this is what happens. You get a perfect job with a house wrap. Then you do something that you have to adjust. The water will go behind the board right there. We want to get the water out on the front once it does leak through. So go ahead and go through that process. He's going to recut along the bottom, lift up the house wrap. So we're putting the drip cap down on the water table. And he's just going to tack it on. You don't have to go crazy. You don't have to go crazy. <laughs> the, the, again, this is a show. We're going to be pulling it apart, but just flash it. And then we want to make sure that any water that comes down along the wood comes out. So we want to put flashing all the way across the top of that like we did the window flange. What I'm going to do is start at the bottom. Let's go ahead and put that down. Yeah, we'll put the strip on. Now, let's just lift this up about a half inch. We want to keep this up off the drip cap. Just, yep, just one. You can nail a few more in. We're not going to because we're going to be taking this apart. We're going to put the first piece down. And I'm going to use the square. It's about 3 sixteenths of an inch. Keep it up. Oh, I see what happened here. There we go. <laughs> the walls usually don't move. Yeah. All right. Now the way that we want to nail, it's not blind nailing. You know, he's just tacking this in. Lap siding gets nailed down near the bottom. We want to overlap this at least an inch. Depending on the, the width, it varies a little bit, but we want to overlap it at least an inch. That the nail, this is not easy to do with one person here. If I were smart, I would have nailed something up ahead of time. You want to make sure the nail doesn't go through both. Like that. A lot of people do it that way. You have the nail go just above the lap. Because you don't want to have these two pieces of wood nailed together. You want to, you want to let them move independently from each other. Wood moves. And plastic moves, concrete moves, metal moves. You have to let it move. By nailing them independently, each one can move a little bit without taking the other with it, without cracking it. All building materials move, so we have to fasten them in ways and plan for ways with control joints and fastening that allows them to move a little bit. Before we put wood on, interior, exterior, it's good to have a moisture meter to find out what the content is of the wood. It's, you can get an expensive one or, or a nice simple one that, one that works. Well, without turning, this is about 8.2, 8% moisture content. That's about normal, that's about what we expect, what we want. Around New England here, moisture content usually goes up to 11, 12 percent. 
if you get a very dry batch of wood, say it's down around 4%, you know it's going to try to reach equilibrium. It's going to move a little bit. It's going to get up to that 8, 9, 12%. So it's going to move. That's why we want to fasten it in the right spot. And if it's very dry, we know it's going to expand also. So if I if, if, if I take some samples and find that it's very, very dry for some reason, I'll cut it a little bit shy on the ends and use a little more caulking because I know it's going to open it up. If I get a batch, uh, a lift, and it's 15, 16, 18% because somebody left it out, then I know it's going to shrink a lot. And again, um, always use a moisture meter to find out what it's going to do when you put it on or before you put it on. Try to let it acclimate to regular job site. If you get it anywhere between 8 and 12%, then that's pretty much optimal. And this comes about 8%, 85 9%. But always, you never know what conditions that it might be stored in or left out in, so you want to make sure. Just plug a moisture meter in and read it. 